Now, day one of the U.S. Africa Leaders Summit brought in NASA as witness as Nigeria and Rwanda became the first African nations to sign the Artemis Accords. It's a U.S.-led bid for international cooperation and traveling to the moon, Mars and beyond. Arise correspondent Ngechi Nana reports. Nigeria is dipping its feet into the outer space territory. At the first ever U.S. Africa Space Forum, Nigeria and Rwanda become the first African nations to sign the Artemis Accords. Expanding our partnership, we are having two more signatories of Rwanda and Nigeria. The Artemis Accords are a common sense statement of principles of what we should do peacefully in space. And so the Artemis Accords are a manifestation, a setting down of principles of peaceful use of space of an intention to help each other out. As part of the U.S.-Africa Leaders Summit, the forum highlights the furtherance of shared goals through the peaceful exploration and the use of the outer space. The accord was signed by the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Issa Ali Pantami, on behalf of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. On behalf of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Representing also my principal, His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, for the signing of uh, today's accord, which is uh, very important to us in so many areas, particularly Nigeria has so many initiatives leveraging on satellite, among others, when it comes to security, agriculture, the fourth industrial revolution, artificial intelligence, robotics, and uh, many more. Furthermore, we know that NASA, the National Aeronautic and Space Administration, is the leading institution in the world. And any effort to work together will support our country significantly in attaining our vision and also our objectives. And for Rwanda, its space agency CEO, Francis Ngabo, signed on behalf of the country. Could not be more pleased to become part of this journey by joining the Artemis Accords. Space-based technology is becoming an increasingly powerful tool for addressing global challenges such as agricultural productivity and climate change. This is why the Rwanda Space Agency was established two years ago with the plans to establish a space center of excellency for research and development. As the Artemis Accord gains two new partners, Nigeria and Rwanda join the other signatories to demonstrate their commitment to a peaceful, responsible and sustainable use of the outer space. Nkechi Nana, Arise News, Washington, D.C. Well, for more, let's bring in Kechi and Nana, who's in Washington, D.C., uh, for more. Um, Kechi, Nigeria and Rwanda becoming the first African nations uh, to sign the Artemis Accord. Uh, how significant is this? Yes, uh, Kenneth, as you saw in the report, Nigeria and Rwanda have now joined the other 20, uh, 21 signatories to the Artemis Accord. And as you saw in the report, we had the Nigerian Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Isa Pantami, signing on behalf of the country. And then for the Rwandan side, you had Francis Ngabo, the CEO of the Rwandan Space Agency, standing in for President Kagame, who was there earlier but had to leave um, early. Now, the significance of this uh, 
a historic event and very exciting, might I add, is that Nigeria now joins uh, other signatories. You have Japan, you have the United States, United Arab Emirates, you have Singapore, you have Saudi Arabia, you have Poland, you have New Zealand, just joining all these um, other countries and partnering with them to um, join the leading conversation of the future of the space exploration and the sustainable use of the outer space. Now, the Artemis Accord was um, established uh, back in 2020 with the State Department, NASA, and um, eight nations. And it just uh, makes the signatories that have now joined uh, Nigeria and Rwanda being a part of it, just committed to the uh, guiding principles of their civil uh, space uh, their civil space activities, uh, registering uh, space objects and promoting um, debris mitigation and also just learning about our universe. And at that forum, that was the first ever actually US Africa uh, space forum obviously at the U.S. Africa Leaders Summit, you had Bill Nelson, the NASA administrator, administrator sort of explaining what is it, it for its partners, what uh, NASA has sort of learned about our planet from space. And he was just giving an example of all the data and all the assets that he now has in orbit that can really tell us um, precise information, Kenneth, of how to operate day to day. He gave an example of how they can inform a farmer uh, where he should or should not plant a certain type of crop on a certain type of land and also being able to sort of provide information on an incoming storm and just more of the advantages of joining this sort of partnership. And it's exciting and sort of innovative for Nigeria to be part of the first African country to be a signatory to the Artemis um, Accord and the discussion of the future of space exploration, Kenneth. Now, Nkechi, uh, this development is coming uh, less than two weeks after uh, the Chinese uh, space uh, agencies uh, launched their uh, Shenzhou uh, 13 spacecraft. And it's also coming, I mean, less than, what, three days or is it four days after the, the Orient capsule returned back to Earth after a 25-day mission orbiting the moon. Uh, we hear that the U.S. is warning Afghan leaders about China and Russia destabilizing the continent. What's all this about? Yes, Kenneth, the U.S. Um, Africa Leaders Summit is obviously about the U.S. Uh, uh, America's relations with the African continent. But you have China and Russia sort of lurking in the background, you know, just hovering there, the elephant in the room that no one really wants to talk about. And the U.S. Admini uh, Biden administration have sort of, in the run up to this summit, have sort of not really wanted to speak on it, sort of dodging the topic and not explicitly speaking on it. They say, it's not about China, it's about our own uh, sorts for partnership with the African continent. And now you have on the very first day of the summit, all that out of the window, US, um, uh, you had Lloyd Austin at a panel earlier with uh, several African leaders, really cautioning them the way you would caution your younger sibling, Kenneth, not to sort of partner with China or Russia. And just explaining that in China, dipping its footprints into Africa, they say, he says China does not give off that sort of transparency in what they're doing. He says uh, Russia's peddling what he calls cheap weapons uh, in the continent and also sending mercenaries around the countries in Africa. And he says this will destabilize the continent eventually or even if it already hasn't. And they go on to explain, uh, you have uh, US Secretary of State Antony Blinken explaining that this is not about competition. He said they're not competing with the other world powers. He said it's not about telling our friends and partners who to choose. He says it's about offering genuine partnership and being transparent. However, it sort of looks different. It looks like they're telling African leaders, look, you have to choose us because we're being transparent. We're rolling out the red carpets for you. We're doting out billions and billions of dollars. I mean, President Biden is expected to announce a $55 billion uh, over, the three, over three years for Africa and also at 
the beginning of the summit, the White House announced a $4 billion um, pledge uh, for 2025 physical year for African health workers. And so they're really sort of courting uh, Afri the African continent. But more important than that, Kenneth, is what Africa wants. That's the most important thing. I mean, America can go on and say, you know, it's not about other, other world powers that are coming in. And as you know, that scramble for Africa, Africa needs to ask itself, what do we want? Do we really need all these external powers? And they need to be discerning in who they choose and what they choose and what issues and policies they really choose to partner with. And quite frankly, it's not really everything that we need to outsource or seek assistance from external powers and I think it's time for the African Union to really set a policy and sit down and really discuss amongst uh, amongst themselves and be discerning in who they choose and the calls that they answer and why they answer those calls are they beneficial to us do we really need to outsource this and hopefully in the next 10 20 years um, Kenneth we won't have China or any other external power sort of for example building our infrastructure for us well, thank you so much, Gachin Nana, for your insight into all that's going on at the U.S. Africa Leaders Summit.